This program is part of a vast landscape available at openandclear.com, offering thousands of hours of podcasting, online communities and events, one-on-one coaching, and online courses to achieve ascension along with us who have. Learn more at openandclear.com. Hello, you're tuning in to the revived version of Ho'oponoono, the practice of giving and receiving of love. As you may have heard of Ho'oponopono, this practice revived to its original edition is a little different than the famous version of Ho'oponopono. Developed by an original Limerian on the continent of Mu, Ho'opono'ono was his gift of a technique that he was taught by the universal spiritual universe, the development and awakening to the balance of all universal systems and the awakening of what ultimately is the self of God. To learn more, please visit www.openandclear.com. It's a tricky world, that's for sure. (laughs) Endless, endless bombardments of different variations of different things that seem to tempt us to losing our power, losing our enjoyment, losing our happiness for whatever reason. Endlessly. It's like there's always something, isn't there? Whether it's in your work, your body, your relationships, your situation. There's always something. Making sure that you're paying attention to the world. Making sure that you're paying attention to this is how we've developed it. This is how we want it to be. Making sure you're still stuck in it. And not somehow losing yourself in joy. We don't want to do that. Losing yourself in perfect happiness and reasons that simply reflect the justification to be happy. No, why would we want to do that? No, we came to this world to experience suffering and pain. So we constantly have some sort of pain, some sort of resentment, some sort of grievance, visible, palpable in our experience so that we can say, yes, I am human. Yes, in it, 
I exist alone. You are here confronting this. You are here joining with me because you want to start to look at the world a little differently. Now, you might not make it as obvious sounding as that, uh, but you might want to be happy more, or you might want to solve some solution, or <laughs> solve some solutions, solve some problems, or help your relationship to be better, help your job and your coworkers to to be happier, in turn, making the life situation at work better. Some sort of ideas you have consists of problems you would like to be fixed. I mean, you're surely you're looking around for some sort of spirituality or alternative therapy for support in this change. I always found it frustrating when I came to some sort of spirituality and I'm like, yes, I want change. And they're like, okay, now you, to get change, you have to not want change anymore. What? <laughs> wait, wait, what are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> No, I, I want this changed. I want this healed. I want this removed. Okay, if you want it healed, you have to try not to heal it ever again. What? Wait. <laughs> and you get into those kind of ideas and those, those kind of concepts, which... Now I absolutely completely agree with though I misunderstood it at the time thinking that my problem was in the physical form the imagery the objects the situation the people I was dealing with and while there was a lot more degrees and <laughs> than simply just not wanting it anymore The actual reality of it is where the solution is. So the reality of that problem. Now we just have to discover, we have to search, and be aware of ourselves enough to reveal where this problem really resides. Are we going to actually want to reveal where this problem resides? I mean, to discover where the problem is, is actually where the solution would be. Do we want to discover where the solution is? Now the tricky thing about wanting change is that you don't actually want the change usually. You just don't want it as it is. And the thing about not wanting it as it is is this actual sense within yourself of resisting the current circumstance. Yes, it, it seems obvious. I resist how it is because I want it different, or I want it different because I resist it as it is. And the thing about the way the nature of the universe actually works, I mean, it might not go in correspondence quite yet to your way of thinking, but if you actually want change, you have to recognize that the whole reason this situation is occurring is in communication with you. Now, if you don't hear what it has to say or receive the lesson that it has to teach, then you're not going to surpass it. You're not going to transcend it. You're not going to... It is not going to finish because it has yet to be validated in actually achieving what it has to offer. So these things keep repeating themselves over and over and over again 
Because you're not paying attention. You're not listening. You're not open to the lesson it actually has to learn. Now there will come a point after time and time again that you finally discover and think to yourself that there's got to be a better way. You're seeing it in movies all over the place now, but it's really a discovering of recognizing that there's got to be something different in the way I'm doing, the way I'm thinking, the, how I'm feeling, than the way I've been doing it this whole time. That we can all agree that in these scenarios, the common variable is yourself. So what is it that is within yourself that could be done differently? Like it might be a little difficult while you're not directly in the situation currently. But when you are, you find that you're a try to react and respond in the same way you've always reacted and responded. And guess what happens when you do the same thing? You get the same results. So you might finally, as you're applying this practice and other mind training practices, you finally become aware eventually of what's happening in your mind. Even if it's as superficially as recognizing how often, how many times have I said it? I mean, you might say that to your kids. How many times do I have to tell you this? You might be saying that to a coworker, trying to get something out of them, getting them to do their job. It's remarkable how it might reflect how the reality of the universe actually sees you. Because if you're not doing this, you're not doing your job. If you're not recognizing that the responsibility for the peace of the situation, for the solution of all your problems resides within you, then you're not doing your job. As much as you want to say, that's not your job, and you're, you're so much separate from the universe, which is perfectly acceptable behavior for a separated one, an identity associated with being in individual body and completely denying the reality of our connectivity and the fact of the universe being one. Perfectly acceptable, perfectly justified and noble along your journey. You will discover more. You will open more when you are ready to discover more and open more. Even as we've been speaking here and talking about more, discovering new facets, you might only go as far as you are willing to understand. I know you think understanding has something to do with you know, how it's brought about or the information and how it might not make sense. The interesting thing about the nature of the universe is that when it doesn't make sense, it's actually me that's not making sense out of it the same thing goes with all these lessons that seem to be repeating re repeat, regurgitate repeating 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 themselves over and over repeating themselves over and over repeating themselves like that effect are you willing to look at it differently are you willing to react differently? Are you willing to respond differently? What are you willing to do differently? When you do notice that this, this has happened before and time and time again, I am ready to do it differently. You kind of have this 
moment of turning in. And while you might turn to any way you see fit, like practicing this technique, eventually you won't need a technique. And you'll learn how to shift your mind from what seems to be difficulties as if you're weak seem actually to be enjoyable challenges to your strength and you start to discover more strengths within yourself ones that you thought you didn't have or you thought were dormant somehow or just weren't present become present What you thought were escaping you or you weren't enough turns out was simply your perception of yourself. And that in reality, you are enough. You are great enough. You are powerful enough to achieve anything and everything Sure, it might be step by step, little by little. But you'll get there. If that's what you seek to do. You might try the big old jump. Trying to jump over the Empire State Building immediately. And find that you didn't make it past the first floor. You might get discouraged about it. You might be upset at yourself Well, there you go. Instead of getting in the elevator or taking the first step up those stairs, you instead say it's impossible. Instead say you can't do it, which I would concur. Jumping over the Empire State Building is rather difficult for someone that believes in gravity so immensely. So... How should we and where should we apply this technique when we start to identify a difficulty, not just in a person, but in a facet of our minds? Having an aspect of our thought system that keeps regurgitating itself. Well, we're probably regurgitating it. Keep thinking in a way of yourself as as little and weak Not good enough, pathetic, annoying, all this stuff, you know, your brothers, sisters told you, and you still repeat it in your mind. Still let it happen over and over. You might not be aware of it, but you're using it against you still. So we become aware. When something happens, we start beating up on ourselves. That's what we want to look at today. That's where we want to apply this. Where are you beating yourself up? Where do you attack yourself? What thoughts and ideas are you using against yourself? It would be those ones that are plainly obvious. Obvious. They're not saying you're amazing. They're not saying you're great. They're not saying you're powerful. They're not saying you're spectacularly bodacious. You're not saying anything great about yourself. That maybe you keep screwing things up. You keep falling into the same mistake. And you might be completely justified because the body seems to be doing that. Seems to be walking and falling into the same hole. Always hitting that same speed bump. Well... Or that pothole.
Let's isolate it in our minds. Pick one. You can always apply it again. Give some shape to it, some image to it. Some sort of structure that might re represent it. You might have already seen it. See it in front of you. As if you're in an intimate conversation, chair to chair. It doesn't have to have eyes or mouth to have these conversations. Get comfortable with it. Shake its hand, if it has any. Hey, how's it going? See, we've been working together for a long time now, and I'm starting to realize that you're not working out for me. And you keep asking for bonuses, and unfortunately, you're not working for the whole company here, and we're going to have to let you go. Let's apply this revived version of Ho'oponoono giving it a name first and then referencing your name second from three to six feet above your head apply this to the, th the way of thinking that we're doing today and then to yourself I am sorry mm -hmm. I am sorry mm -hmm. I forgive you mm -hmm. I forgive you mm -hmm. I thank you. Mm -hmm. I thank you. Mm -hmm. I trust you. Mm -hmm. I trust you. Mm -hmm. I love you. Mm -hmm. I love you. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to see things differently. I choose to know you as perfect. Mm -hmm. I choose to know you as perfect. Mm -hmm. I choose to see you at peace. Mm -hmm. I choose to see you at peace. Mm -hmm. I choose to feel you as love. Mm -hmm. I choose to feel you as love. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I accept complete responsibility and I am accountable for this situation, for this way of thinking. I am you. Mm.
Mm, feel free to apply that to as many thought systems that you feel get in your way. Any beliefs that you feel have revealed themselves, that you see doesn't correspond with your goals, with your choice of ascension, or transcendence of the world. Attempt to honestly feel and make that shift in your mind. Well, there's so many ways of understanding it and making sense out of it. The truth is, is you have the power. You have the authority here. These thoughts have no power over you. You've simply let them run wild, run free. These emotions, they don't have power over you. They don't tell you how to feel. You interpret and determine what they feel like. So it's always been up to you. And when you get this confidence and practice this sense of control in yourself, you see that it's not about control, but the situations are, have always been in your control as well. It's only been giving you what you wanted. Sure, you might not have revealed this to yourself yet. It's okay. It might be true, it might not. It doesn't really matter. But you can see on the surface, there are things you like and things you don't like. But what was the decision? What was the desire? Down under there. That gave you the ability to choose between things you like and don't like. Is it having free will? Having the ability to choose? At least it feels that way. How much do you have the ability to choose from? Sure, you can only choose between the options you're given. But what about the reality of this circumstance? Say your mind, your sensations, your feelings. Your relationship, your job. Your community, your friends. And endless, endless variations. Where we could say we only have the freedom to choose in just a few. Even our ability to vote. Does it involve your ability to choose how influential are you now there's a couple ways of thinking that you might be taking in the direction of those questions you might be revealing th that those questions seem to make you feel weak Oh, I feel less. Oh, yeah, I don't really have power there. Oh, yeah, I don't really have control. Oh, yeah, so I'm succumbed to 
these people this thing this situation or you might be in the perspective of yeah I actually do have power to do that oh yeah yeah you're right I can change this scenario oh yeah I can do this and that if you came with the first these types of questions start to reveal where you can actually apply this very technique are you going to apply it? Are you willing to apply it? You'll be amazed at all the things you're going to discover. If you really want change, you reveal where the honestly true problem is and the solution is right by its side. Thank you, God. Thank you for being here. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you. Thank you. You have been listening in on the revived technique and examples of Ho'opono Ono, developed over 200,000 years ago on the continent of Mu by an original Limerian shaman. To learn more, please visit www.openandclear.com. Request a free copy of the whole Opono Ono practice PDF by emailing openandclear at gmail.com. Thank you for joining with us and have a beautiful day. <laughs>